Today, I'm gonna to show you how to do this from scratch. Clicky and test. We got a little thing showing up. Yay. Oh, and hey, I'd like to mention this video's sponsor, Skillshare.com. Now it's a brand new year here in 2019 and Skillshare will help keep you learning and thriving as they offer 25,000 different classes in coding, design, business, and more. For instance, you're about to watch my tutorial that contains JavaScript, but you may want to watch this full beginner's JavaScript course at Skillshare. Skillshare is also super affordable with a subscription that only costs 10 bucks a month. But if you're one of the first 500 of my subscribers to click the link below here in the description, you get the first two months free. So take advantage. Hey everyone, what's up? Gary Simon of Corsetro. So today I thought I would do a sort of a HTML, CSS, JavaScript, sort of just a, a quick little use case where I demonstrate how you can create this effect uh, that you can commonly see. Sometimes it's like usually in the nav bar where you see a magnifying glass search icon of some sort, you click it and it expands out. Um, so I just wanted to show you how, and you know, one potential approach that you can take with that. Um, and just to show you again about what's happening here. So first, if I refresh, we do have some initial animation occurring. Uh, if we click this, we'll see that I, the text area actually expands and then we have a typewriter effect. Let me show you that again, which is controlled through JavaScript. Men who love weirdos, that's a placeholder value that we're setting through JavaScript. Um, and then if we start typing, it's gonna give us a tool tip that I, you know, there's no search button, so just hit enter to search or something like that. So there's a lot of different ways that you could take this, that this is just one way. So hopefully you'll, you know, you'll gain some understanding of, of how you can implement this and perhaps modify it on your own. All right, so if you haven't yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button with the bell notification icon as well so that you get notified because I'm uploading all the time. All right, so I, let's go ahead and get started. All right, to get started here, I have a uh, empty folder called MicroSearch, um, and there's there's nothing inside of it. So I'm using Visual Studio Code, a free code editor from Microsoft. We're gonna create a new document, index.html. Um, inside of here, we will also put exclamation point and enter, and that'll give us some quick boilerplate HTML. I'm gonna type in link, enter, and that will give us our CSS main.css file. We'll create that folder in the file up here. CSS and inside of it main.sass. I'm just going to use uh, sass just for, for nesting abilities. Um, and also down here, I'm going to click watch sass. Um, you're going to need to install um, two different extensions if you want to follow along with my exact setup. Uh, over here, this is where you search for extensions. Uh, the first one, just type in sass and install the live sass compiler here. And also um, live reload and Live server, yeah, that's the one we want right here. So those are the two that I will be using. So let's go back here to our files and we will choose watch SAS and that just uh, lets us write SAS and there's our main.css file there. I'll go, ahead, I'll go ahead and X off of that. Um, and let's go ahead and begin. I, I think before we begin, since we're over here dealing with our files, um, I do have an images folder with just a single SVG graphic of a magnifying glass. Um, I think I got this one from um, Icon Finder. I'll go do that right now. And I believe the one that I used is right, I think it might have been this one. Uh, and, and notice I, I, I made this by free and also the um, license filtering, no link back. We want no link back. So it may have been just this one. Any of these will work, of course. Um, we're not doing anything unique with them. So save that as I, a file called um, what's it called? Yeah, I uh, called search.svg. All right, there it is, just search.svg. And let's go ahead and get started writing the, uh, just the HTML portion. There's pretty much hardly anything here, so you don't have to worry about it. Control B will get rid of that sidebar. All right, so uh, for our uh, HTML, so I'm just gonna have a div element uh, with a class of container because I, I want everything nested in a single container that we can use uh, the display grid to, to center it vertically and horizontally. So um, we'll do div, put a class of container there. All right, and then inside of it, we're gonna have an H1 that says search for your, your soulmate. I don't know why I chose that. Um, I just give him some, I don't know. I'm just trying to make it look less uh, cookie, cl uh, cl cl cookie clutter if I could talk. Um, and then also another div, uh, and that would be class of search contain. 
And you'll see why I add this in the CSS um, in a bit. It actually has to do with the little circle animation, uh, but you'll see. Um, and then image source equals images. That's our search.svg right there. I'll just do search button. And then we'll give it an ID because we're going to reference it in JavaScript. Search hyphen BTN. After that, we're going to have our input. The type is text. The ID is search because we'll reference that in JavaScript as well. And we're going to set a placeholder value of uh, empty just for now. And I'll also describe that going forward uh, in a bit. We're also going to have a P ID of tip. And we'll say hit enter to search. And initially, this will not show up. We'll be hiding it. All right. Uh, so let's. that's it for the HTML. Very simple, as you can see. So let's save that. And by the way, what we'll control B, right click and open with live server after you have that live server extension installed. And I'll get it out over here. And here we go. So what I'll do is I get this kind of moved into place just so we can kind of see what we're typing and what we're dealing with. Uh, yeah, just right there is good. All right, so let's go to our main.sass file and we'll start uh, just giving some basic uh, structure to this. So the first thing uh, will be body. So I'm just gonna say height, 100, uh, 100 viewport height, and we're setting this just because uh, we're gonna use display grid in, in, to align it, and it won't work without that. Uh, margin zero to get rid of default margin from the browser. Display grid. Again, nothing's happening too much yet. Um, we're gonna do justify content, center. So it centers it. We're also gonna do align the items, center. There we go. And so it just centers that single container item uh, inside of the body element as seen here. All right. And then we will also do font family. Of course, we're going to be using Montserrat. Did you think I was going to use something else? Probably not. Uh, background color. I'm just going with a, a darker color. I'm sick of sticking with the white. So um, RGB 2839 and 54. There we go. Things are kind of starting to t uh, take shape here. So now our H1, we're just going to make the color white and font size 3.5 EM. And it looks kind of bad at this, uh, that viewport, but now it looks better when we expand it. I'm not making this responsive, although if you wanted to use that as an exercise to do so, just use media queries uh, to, to adjust things. Um, so continuing on, I uh, will have our container that's the, the first div element, um, text align center. Nothing too exciting happening yet. Now here's where we're going to get to the exciting stuff, the input. We only have one input, so I'm just going to reference the input selector itself. So I'll say input, and I'll say font family. The, input, uh, the font family doesn't get uh, uh, set, even despite putting it on the bar body margin. So we have to f put it on the uh, the the uh, input itself. There we go. Um, it's just above my head as I see. Um, we're going to do a background color with this kind of just like a more saturated blue. So RGB 0, 110 and 255. By the way, if you're thinking I'm coming up with these values on my own, I'm not. That's just simply me hovering over the value and then changing it. And then it gives me these values up here. I wish I would be that great at choosing colors. That'd be awesome. That would be that would, I would have to be like a savant or something. I uh, with 20 pixels, height I'm going to say is 20 pixels. So what we're doing here now is I'm making, I, it's basically a circle I'm going to be making. So we're transforming the input into a circle. Uh, I know it's not that yet, as we can see just above my head right there. Um, but it will, it will serve as like a background for an, an icon for the search uh, magnifying glass. So we still have work to do. Um, we'll do padding, 20 pixels. All right, I'll save after each of these adjustments so you can see what's happening. Border radius, we're gonna have 30 pixels. So that turns it into a circle now. Um, also, we'll have a border of none. That gets rid of that weird emboss kind of thing going on there. Uh, we'll also have color white, just for that's for the text color. And then also, right now, because I want this to be a button and not somewhere you click in search, I'm going to change the cursor 
from text, which is what that is, to pointer. So it turns it into like a, a button. This looks obviously nothing like a um, a regular search uh, or te input input text field essentially. Um, we're also going to change the font size here to 1.6 em, which we can't tell yet unless we were to type into it. There we go, and I I think that's good for now. Um, one thing I do want to do is add a nest here. We're going to put and and we're going to say focus. Because right now when we focus on it, it has this blue outline. I want to get rid of that. So we'll just put in outline none. Save it. And now we click and it doesn't do that anymore. All right. Um, so now at this point, let's focus on that magnifying glass, which is contained within an image. All right. So let's reference IMG. And we'll say width will be, and again, th these values, I didn't just come up with them on the spot. I kind of experimented with the size. Uh, width is 22 pixels. We'll say the margin is 18 pixels from the top, 0, 0, 18 pixels from the left. All right. And of course, if we wanted to get in there, we have to change this here to a position absolute. Ooh, look at that. Starting to take shape. Um, We'll also put in cursor pointer for this as well. There we go. Now, of course, we click on it and nothing freaking happens. Um, that's going to be the job of the JavaScript uh, itself. But first, let's um, let's deal with this this uh, paragraph down here. This hit enter search. Let's just get that out of the way real quickly. So P, we're going to say the color is right now. I'm just going to say blue, and I'll show you kind of my my process for doing this. I just type in some random color blue. And then I come to wherever I want it and wherever I think would work well uh, for the color itself. Hit save. And it's something like that. Uh, the actual values that I used um, were these values right here. 106, 158, 226. Yeah, a little bit brighter. All right. Um, text transform. Uppercase. Oh, I just noticed that uh, my, my head is kind of on top of that. There, you can see it a little bit better if I go there. There we go. Um, let's continue on. A text transform. We'll have font size 0.80m. We're going to have text align left. All right. We're also going to have uh, margin left. We're going to push it over by about 50 pixels. Um, and, and on a mobile viewport like, like this, you would want to change, probably center it, keep it centered. but. Again, I just kind of designed this for desktop. And by the way, we're not going to even be seeing this by default. This will only show up after a person has started to type uh, something. But I'm just getting it styled initially here. Um, we're also going to do, um, for now, there's a few other um, properties I want to put, but I'm not going to do them just yet. Uh, for now, I'm just going to do visibility hidden. Uh, and also opacity will be actually I'm gonna leave that out for now. We'll just say that. Okay. So at this point, this is what it looks like. Nothing happens unless you click on on the side of it, we can see the cursor showing up. Um, but if we click on it, we want it to expand out. All right, so let's go to our index HTML. And we'll start writing out a little bit of very simple JavaScript. All right, so script and we have to gain access to some of these elements up here that have IDs. So we're going to declare uh, variables or constants right here. Const will say search btn equals document dot get element by ID. And this first one is search hyphen btn. All right, so that's in reference to the image, this little magnifying glass. I'll hit uh, Shift, Alt, and Down arrow key to replicate that line. This next one, we'll just call the search. This is going to be for the input, which we gave an ID of search right here. All right. And uh, we'll also get access to our tip right here. So we'll call this uh, tip and tip. All right. All right. So when somebody clicks on the search button right here, right? We want something to happen. So in order for that to work, we'll do search button dot add event listener. 
and this is going to be a click. All right, and then inside of there, we're going to say we're going to use uh, JavaScript to set some CSS styles. All right, so we'll say search dot, and this is remember search is in reference to the actual blue uh, text field right here. We want to we want it to make it uh, go wider, right? So we're going to set the width. So we're going to say search dot style dot width equals, and we'll say eighty percent. So if we save this, click it, there we go. Let me show you that again. Move things over just a bit. We click it, and it automatically kind of goes out all the way like that. Obviously, the alignment of this uh, we need to be adjusted through padding, but we'll deal with that in a second. All right. So we also, when that happens, like I just mentioned, we want to have that padding adjusted. The reason I'm not setting the padding here by default in the main.css, if I did that, let me show you what happens. Um, so if we go to our search here, we put padding, or our input rather, we put padding left, uh, we'll say like 60 pixels. It makes it wider uh, in a sense. So we don't want that. So instead of that, we'll set it here and we do padding left and of course when it comes to your CSS property names uh, they don't use dashes they use this camel case here uh, padding left and so this gets changed here to 60 pixels and now when we click it there we go all right so we also what what's bad for the user experience if somebody clicks this they have to click again for it to focus so we can set the focus through JavaScript as well um, so we can all we have to do is search dot focus. All right. So now if we click, it's ready to type. We don't have to click twice. All right. Sweet. I uh, also another thing that we'll do is I if I refresh this. And depending on where you hover, there's sometimes there's an area where you might see the the uh, the, the cursor. I uh, oh wait no. If I click on this. We don't want this little hand to show up, right? Uh, the pointer, as it's called. We want it to go back to the regular text. So what we'll do is um, just underneath this one where we're setting all the styles, we'll say cursor. We set it back to where it was before, and that is text. So we click on it, and now you can see we have the regular text input there. All right. So now what would be cool is if we had a placeholder, um, it would be cool maybe to have like a typewriter effect where it's showing an example um, being typed out like a, a potential search term, right? So if we put placeholder here, something like uh, men who love weirdos, well, we could clearly see this doesn't work too well because we could. it's hard to see right here, but you can actually see the first letter M. Um, so that's why I'm not setting it there. Let's set it through JavaScript only when it's been clicked. So to do that, I, we could just put in, and we're going to not do it this way, but I wanted to show you just uh, a real quick way of doing it. Uh, search dot uh, set attribute. And the attribute that we want to set is the placeholder value. And then we say men who love weirdos. <laughs> okay. So now if I click it, we can see it's hard, kind of hard to see. This text isn't um, looking very good. So let's let's go ahead and style that text up uh, because it needs changed, um, the placeholder text. So we come up here. We'll put an. We put a uh, placeholder and color. And just a lighter blue color, which happens to be 185, uh, 202. There we go. So let's try it again men who love weirdos all right so it shows up but it would be kind of nicer for that to be typed in and like a typewriter effect so to do that uh we're just going to create a real quick function uh and so in that function we will i uh, we'll call it typewriter all right and inside we're going to say if and let's set some um constants up here or very <coughs> sorry variables we're going to say var i equals zero uh we're going to say message equals men who love weirdos and var speed 
uh, we can control like a typewriter speed through uh, milliseconds. So we'll say 100. And it, it, the more you increase this, um, the slower it will be. So we have our I up there. We'll say less than uh, message dot length. So in other words, how many characters are there? So we'll say message equals search dot get attribute placeholder. And we're going to say plus message dot char at I. Now, this may be a little bit confusing to you. Um, and if it is, don't worry. I'm going to uncommon it um, just to show you what happens if we don't add this. Uh, so what I'll do is just put this here. All right. So here what we'll say is we're going to do what we were doing before, the search attribute. Uh, and by the way, um, yeah, we'll, we'll leave that there. Uh, we do search.set attribute. And we'll say, um, yeah, it's the placeholder. And then we're just going to pass in for just for now, this part right here. So char at's a method that we can place um, onto this, this uh, variable up here. Um, and it's passing in the current number. Uh, so it's going to pass in one letter at a time. Um, it's not going to work how we want to, but again, I just want to demonstrate you know, why we're doing this. After that, we're going to add to our I variable um, and then set timeout. We're going to say typewriter, which is the function itself, and then the speed. All right. So we'll call our um, typewriter inside of the click event listener. Now look at it going through each of the individual letters. That obviously is not what we want. So this right here, hopefully I'm, it's not going, okay, good. I, I wanna make sure I'm not on top of the, uh, the content on my green screen footage. So what we'll do is just uncomment that out in message. So what this is doing is saying, all right, message equals search. Um, we're gonna get the attribute of placeholder, the current value, and then we're just gonna add to it the next letter right there. So now we click on it, let's refresh. Oh, and that is because we need to get rid of this. There we go. Click, and there we go. Men who love weirdos as it's uh, being typed out. And of course, it goes away as it normally does uh, when it comes to placeholder text and you're starting to focus on it. All right. so. Um, now what we want to happen would, would be nice is I don't really have a, a button that a person can click on or touch after they, they, they um, do the search term like um, hot dudes or something or, or hot, hot chicks. How would we hot chicks? I don't know hot dudes, man. What are, we, what are we doing over here? So we'll say hot chicks and then uh, there's not a button for them to click. And so it may not be obvious that, you know, they just hit enter or whatever on their keyboard. So we can have a little tool tip come up here right when they start typing. It'll we'll make it fade in or something like that. Um, so to do that, we will go ahead and add a uh, an event listener onto the search right here, so we can detect uh, on key down. Uh, so what we'll do is just type in search dot add event listener on key down. And we will say inside of here, uh, tip. And remember, we, re we defined a constant called tip right here, which is in relation to this part. We'll say tip.style.visibility equals visible. So we click it, and then we type. And then it just shows up very abruptly like that. Let's make it fade in uh, with a transition of, of opacity. So if we go back here and we go back to our text, we're going to set the opacity to zero. And before I did have display none when I was you know coming up with this tutorial, but I uh, the the opacity wouldn't work in that that regard um, when it came to the the transformation when you set display none. So I used visibility hidden instead, and it works. Um, so now. Let's save that and save this. I when we go back here, let's set our tip dot style dot opacity 
um, equal to one. And we're gonna set the opacity, oh, the opacity is already zero there. And then in order for it to actually transition or animate from zero opacity to one, we have to add in a, a transition. Um, so to do that, we'll simply say transition and we'll transition the opacity property and we'll say like two seconds. All right, so click on it and we'll start typing. There it goes. And it now it just kind of nicely fades in. You can also add other properties. Like if you wanted to maybe slide over or, or slide up, you can do that as well. You would just change transition to perhaps all instead of just uh, opacity. All right, so what else could we do uh, just to have fun with it? Um, we could add some sort of animation to this. Oh, by the way, this isn't, um, this isn't growing out. That's because we haven't added a transition on that element either. So let's add a transition property. And the transition will be width, and we'll say one, one second and ease. So now we click it, there we go. It's uh, real nice and smooth. Sweet. Okay, so let's uh, add some sort of animation. Like this, this button here is boring. So, and, and really this type of thing in this context, if you had this big of an area, for purposes of user experience, I would not do it like this. We would have this open by default. This sort of thing is what you would see if there it was up in like a toolbar, like in a header navigation of some sort, um, and you don't have a lot of space. Um, you could do this instead, but really I didn't want to build out a full UI for that. I just kind of wanted to demonstrate it like this. Um, so to draw more attention to it, we can do some sort of animation, um, maybe where there's like a, a circle stroke a stroke circle sort of just like like pulsing like radaring out from it all right trying to get the user's attention visually um to, that it's this is a call to action that you should click on of some sort so to do that um what we could do is we could use real quickly if you come up to our html um our search contain now Originally, when I thought about how we would make like a, a different circle kind of emanate and grow out and fade out and just keep on doing so, I thought we could use uh, the before pseudo the before selector on the input type right here. But apparently that will not work on this type of uh, HTML element. Um, it needs to be on an element that opens and closes uh, in order for that to work. So. Um, what we'll do is focus it on this search contain right here. So you're probably wondering how are we gonna get centered up and it's pretty easy. Um, so what we'll do is we're gonna create that uh, selector right here, search contain, and we'll say before. And whenever you do this sort of thing with a before selector, you have to put in a content here with empty content, a border radius of 50%. Uh, percent. And by the way, let me scale this in so we can see what we're gonna do here. All right, good, we can see it, okay. I can't see anything yet because we haven't given it color. So we'll say um, a width of around, we can say 50 pixels, a height of 50 pixels, um, a border of four pixels solid. For now, we'll just make white. We can see it right there. Um, and we'll say the position will be absolute. There we go. And then animation, we're gonna give it animation obviously to make it actually pulse. So we'll call it grow with one seco seconds, seconds. And instead of making it, um, well for now we'll say infinite. And I'll, I'll show you the problem with that in a second. Um, so let's create our keyframes for grow. And we'll say from transform a scale of one of where it's at currently. And then also two transform a scale of maybe 1.5 okay it's a little bit off center so you, you can use uh, you can adjust your height and that's pretty much perfect right there okay um, so right now if you click on this it stays right there and it looks horrendous um, so that's why I thought uh, what we could do is initially I thought, okay, we can use JavaScript to simply remove that property 
but unfortunately the property, when it comes to JavaScript, it doesn't have access to the before selector or pseudo selector here. So what I decided to do is, well, initially in the context of this landing page, it'll get someone's attention maybe after three counts. Um, another thing you could have done if you really wanted to, to, to make it iterate forever, uh, is simply use maybe like a span tag or something. And then you could use JavaScript uh, to make it stop once it is clicked. Uh, but I didn't really feel like going into all that. Um, so what we'll do is uh, I'm going to change the color real quickly because uh, the white doesn't really fit too well. It's, it sticks out way too much. All right. And then also uh, we want it to fade out as well. So opacity zero. There, now it's much more subtle and I, I kind of just like that better. Two, three, there we go. Awesome, awesome stuff. So we'll do it one more time. All right, freaking cool. Very, very fun. So you can see, you know, as long as you know some, some DOM ma manipulation with JavaScript, and you're starting to understand your CSS properties and values, and you know you're getting your HTML written up. You can pretty much do whatever you wanted to do, want to do uh, straight out of the gate. All right, so hopefully you found that useful. And if you did, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel with the bell notification icon. Also check out my Discord server that's there in the description here in YouTube, idle in the general area, and I'm always there. There's thousands of other people there as well. All right, see you guys later. Goodbye.